you, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here today to talk about the analysis of rail milling process as a rail maintenance process, simulations and experiments. Intense train traffic. Oh, sorry. Intense train traffic combined with increasing X loads cause profile degradation of rails and wheels by wear and cyclic plastic material flow. The surface of rails and wheels is deteriorated by RCF defects like hijacks, spalling, shelling and squats. Besides, the defects like corrugation and wheel burns can add additional damage by increasing the dynamic load in the system. The two commonly used methodology to keep the wheel rail system in a safe and full functional condition and thereby extend the rail lifetime are rail milling and rail grinding. grinding. I'd now like to consider rail milling in more detail. Since the 19th century, milling is a commonly used process in industrial machining due to its precision and high surface quality. It's a non-abrasive rotary cutting process where material is cut out of the surface in form of chips. The process heat is transferred into these chips and the tool as the machine, su rail su uh, machine surface show no significant increase of the temperature. Rail milling was introduced about 25 years ago by the Austrian company Linsinger. They put the high precision CNC machine upside down on a locomotive and managed the challenge uh, with the moving workpiece and the moving machine on the workpiece. What I mean with moving workpiece is that the rail can shift, as shift slightly in all directions during a maintenance action. In order to analyze the rail milling process in detail, we from the Material Center Leoben developed a simulation tool set for rail milling in close collaboration with our company partners Linsing and Lindmark. A 3D model developed with the finite element program Deform 3D should provide a picture of the whole milling process with respect to the profile change and the chip formation process. In the simulated tool holder segment, 15 cutting inserts are attached in three rows and five inserts per row. A rotational speed and a feed rate are applied on the center of this tool holder segment to simulate the, mo the motion. The rail part has a typically 60 E2 profile and is fixed on the bottom. As a second step, a two-dimensional simulation was investigated to get a closer look on the milling forces, the temperature di distribution and the load conditions of one milling insert in action and the machined rail. For this simulation, the finite element code Abacus explicit and an arbitrary Lagrange-Ulirian method was used. The model represents a small region of the rail bar nearby the milling area and one milling insert with a standard cutting edge radius. The special features of the models are a Olirian boundary condition on the left side of the rail part to simulate the material inflow and a Olirian boundary condition of the top surface of initially modeled chip to simulate the material outflow. The right side of the rail part is able to grow in size, giving a general picture of the milled rail. In order uh, to verify the simulation results and to get a general picture of the reprofiling process by milling, an experimental study was made at the construction facility of Linsinger, where a random rail profile was milled on a typical 60E2 profile. Here we can see the railhead before the milling process, colored in red is superimposed by the railhead at the cross section of the railhead after reprofiling by milling, colored in green. By comparing the obtained results of the experiments on the left side and the simulations in the middle, we can see a good agreement with respect to the profile change, the metal removal, and on the right side we can see the produced chips. Only a difference of about 3% is seen by comparing the deepest milling precision at the gauge corner of the rail, in the simulations and in the measurements. For a better visualization of the rail surface condition after milling, uh, close-up views at, uh, 
at the, of the railhead at three locations in a transverse direction were made before the milling process and after the milling process. Before milling, we can see the pictures in red. The railhead has a distinct surface roughness, unevenness, and a little bit corrosion on the surface. After the milling process, the pictures in green, the railhead show a smooth and straight cuts without any damage and cracking. To find out the temperature development during the milling process, the results of the subsequent 2D simulation are needed. So here we can see the temperature field in the process zone of the rail and the tool in counterplots at defined milling time steps and in a short video of the milling simulations. The highest temperature is reached in, at the contact surface of the tool and the chip after a milling time of three milliseconds. The temperature in the machined rail surface, the surface below the milling insert, shows no significant increase during and after milling. We can say we have a maximum temperature after the milling process or during the milling process uh, of about 320 degrees in a milled surface. To confirm the, uh, the results of the 2D milling simulations, also metallographical investigations were made after the milling tests. The microstructure in transverse direction on the left side in the orange frame picture and in the longitudinal direction, the green frame picture, show no significant uh, uh, influence of the temperature and demonstrate uh, unchanged burlitical microstructure. No phase change is seen nearby and at the rail surface. I'd now like to look at the rolling sliding contact behavior and the fatigue behavior of a milled rail in service. For this study, a 2D model was investigated where a wheel is rolling sliding over a milled rail. To consider the influence of the milling process onto, uh, onto the milled rail in service, it is necessary to map the results of the experiments, such as milling facets and residual stress field, onto the rail part of the simulation model. The milling facet, what you can see here, it depends on the milling parameters, like the milling velocity, the feed rate, and the uh, milling radius. In this model, we have a facet length of 3.36 millimeter and a facet height of 0.012 millimeter, um, corresponding to the facet dimensions of a milled rail, theoretical calculated milled rail, with a standard set of milling parameters. All combinations of the shown loads and slip values, accelerating and braking were calculated and averaged for the residual stress output because, sorry, with this model we want to, uh, want to see the, residual, uh, the resulting residual stresses of a milled rail after some parts of a wheel. And so we made uh, all combinations of this shown loads and averaged this value for the comparison with the in-track test, where we don't know really the, the load conditions, what will happen in this time. To verify these simulation results, I said a residual stress measurements with the X-ray diffraction method were made at the milled and traffic loaded rail after about 11 days, days in track and 0.12 million gross tons of loading and at the burn one rail out of the same track without any maintenance action. Here we can see the average value of the measured and simulated residual stresses in, uh, with respect to the rail depth, sorry, in axial direction on the left side and transverse direction on the right side. In the simulation model, the influence of the surface roughness in a sub-micron range was not taken into account and therefore no values are indicated for the first 50 micrometers to the rail surface, what you can see at the cut of the black curves. 
by comparing the axial residual stresses of the one rail sample, the blue curve, with the middle and traffic loaded rail sample, the red curve, both show almost the same development of the residual stresses with increasing rail depths. The simulated residual stresses in axial direction differ slightly into the region of a little bit higher compressive stresses. By looking at the transverse residual stresses and compare the run rail, pro, uh, run rail sample with the milled and traffic loaded rail sample, a shift toward the compressive region is seen at the milled and traffic loaded one. The simulated transverse residual stresses show nearly the same development like the milled and traffic loaded sample. So we can say that the obtained numerical results match satisfactorily with the measurements of the in-track tests and the developed simulation model allows to studying the development of residual stresses of a milled and traffic loaded rail. Just a quick recap of my main points. The measured and simulated rail surface contour and the produced chips agree satisfactorily by comparing the milling test with the 3D milling simulations. In meteorographical pictures, the remaining rail material appears unchanged after milling. This reflects our temperature results of the 2D milling simulations and the influence of the rolling sliding contact onto a maintained rail by milling. The developed residual stresses in the simulations and in the measurements agree also satisfactorily and show mostly compressive stresses. Thank you for your attention and if there are any questions, please ask.